assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to one and all today we will study about acute oral toxicity and calculation of ld50 of a drug from a given data i am sheikh abu sufyan welcome you to my youtube channel pharma learning forever at the end of this e learning session you are able to define toxicity and ld50 value discuss different types of toxicity studies and oecd guidelines and calculate ld50 value based on given data so let's start with the first that is definition of the toxicity and ld50 value so do remember that the degree by which any chemicals or drug substances can produce harmful effect in the human or animal is called as toxicity so the degree by which any chemical or it may be the drug or substances it produces harmful effect in a human or in case of the animals then this this is called as toxicity so the science which deal with harmful effect of the drug it is called as toxicology so very important parameter which measure toxicity of the drug it is ld50 value that is also called as lethal dose 50% so let's see the definition of the ld50 so the ld50 it is amount or dose of the test substance that is needed to cause a death in 50% of the test animal so it is the dose or the amount of the test substance that is needed to cause the death in 50% of the test animal for example if you have given the dose of maybe some milligram of the test drug in case of the 10 any animals so out of those 10 animal if there is death in the five animals means 50% of of the animals then that particular dose since it produces death in five out of 10 animal so that is 50% of the test animal so that dose it is nothing but ld50 value so it is very important parameter and this is the indicator of toxicity of the drug so uh, let's see what are the different type of toxicity studies so this is our second learning outcome of today's session so the first type of toxicity study it is acute toxicity study where you are giving the single dose of drug and try to observe the if toxic effect of the drug in the animal second kind of uh, toxicity study it could be chronic in nature so the chronic study then sub acute toxicity study so in chronic and sub acute toxicity study you are giving the drug repeatedly to the test animal so once you select dose by acute toxicity test then that particular dose or sub toxic dose you can give to the animal for longer period of time so especially in case of the chronic study you give drug for the 90 days and in case of the sub acute toxicity study you are giving drug generally for the 28 days and then you observe what is effect it produce for long term administration of the drug on the animal so once you get that data so that data it is nothing but data that you have received out of sub acute toxicity study and chronic study so very easy to remember in case of acute toxicity test you are giving single dose of the drug and trying to observe their toxic effect whereas in case of chronic or sub acute toxicity study you are repeatedly giving the dose for more period of time so sub acute you are giving for 28 days and chronic you are giving the dose for 90 days and you observe their toxic effect in the animal okay in addition to this there are other special kind of toxicity studies like embryo toxicity study it is there so now you can do this study in case of rabbits rat even in case of the zebra fish some studies are like genotoxicity study carcinogenicity study and mutagenicity can also be studied as a part of toxicity study so depending upon the nature of the drug the type of chemical it is what is the data available with structurally related compound you can decide what type of study it is needed in in case of that particular investigational new molecules okay so this is the type of toxicity study now we'll be seeing in detail about very important class of acute oral toxicity study that is acute toxicity class method so it is one of the uh, important uh, acute toxicity test that is acute toxicity class method so at a glance we'll try to see what are the different types of gu guidelines but one guideline we are seeing in the detail that is oecd guideline 423 okay so in this uh, we determine the toxic dose of the drug and it is the stepwise procedure 
with the use of three animals of a single sex per step. So for every step you are using three animals. These animals are generally uh, having the single sex. So the preferred sex of the animal it is the female. So most of the time you are using the female rats to conduct this study. Okay, and the, this rat since it is the female you have to also ensure that the rat should not be pregnant and it also should be nulliparous in nature nulliparous means or it has not delivered any pups or the offspring okay so the rat should be nulliparous and a non pregnant and preferably you are using the female rat and how many rats you are using per dose so per dose you are using the three animals rather per step you are using the three animals okay so suppose if you are given the dose in the first step of uh, the acute toxicity class method then depending on the mortality or morbid status of the animal so here there are two parameters one could be the mortality that is the death of the animal or morbid status it means animals is not died but that animal is sick so that animal if it is sick and showing the sign and symptom of the toxicity Although there is no death of the animal, but that also considered as a toxic effect of the drug. Okay, so depending on the mortality or the morbid status of the animal, on an average two to four step may be necessary to allow judgment on the acute toxicity of the test substances. So now let's see how you are judging it and on how on the basis of two to three steps you can classify the drug. Um, in, in particular toxicity class okay since this method help you to classify drug in particular class it is called as acute toxicity class method okay hope you will remember this so let's see how we are doing this study so now suppose if you have the drug molecule for which uh, there is no structurally related compound is available or structurally related compound is available but those compounds are not studied for toxicity so if that is the case then it is always better to start with lowest possible dose. So mostly we are using in case of OECD guideline 423 and OECD guideline 420, we use these four dose that is 5 milligram, 50 milligram, 300 milligram and 2000 milligram per kg. So for those drugs for which the toxicity data it is not available, so it is better to start with a lower dose. So we'll be starting with the 5 milligram per kg. So let's say you are given 5 milligram per kg dose to the three number of the animal and out of these three animal if there is death or sign and symptom of uh, morbidity or toxicity in two to three animals so either all three animals show the sign and symptom or toxicity or the death or uh, only two animals are showing sign and symptom of toxicity so if that is the case then those drugs can be categorized as the drug having toxicity between 0 to 5 milligram per kg so it is the GHS category that is globally harmonized system. So it classify chemicals and your drugs into different category based on their toxicity. So it is classified as the drug with GHS category of 0 to 5 because there is death after giving the dose of 5 milligram in 2 to 3 animals out of the 3 animals. Okay. Suppose if there is only death it is in one animal or there is no death. So there is zero death or there is one death. So if that is the case since more than 50% uh, of animals they survived here okay whereas in first case uh, out of three there is two death or either or maybe three death so that indicated more than 50% animals they show the sign and symptom of toxicity or they show the death okay so you have classified whereas if there is no death here then what you can do instead of classifying that drug into particular category you can give next higher dose. So now for the additional three animal, you will give next dose that is 50 milligram per kg. So when you give 50 milligram per kg, if there is death in two to three animal, then that can be classified as a category two that is having the toxicity between five to 50 milligram per kg. If there is no death, then you can go to next higher dose that is three milligram per kg. And likewise, you can also go to the next possible dose that is 2000 milligram per kg. So based on the step by step study that is start from the low dose, you can able to classify the drug from in the category one, which having the uh, toxic dose between zero to five, GHS category two, having the toxic effect between the five to 50 milligram and GHS category three, which having the toxic effect between 50 to 300 milligram. Likewise, GHS category four, that is 300 to 2000 milligram. And then last one that is GHS category five, 
which having the toxicity more than 2000 or maybe between the 2000 to 5000 milligram per kg. So if the drug having toxic effect or not showing sign and symptom, even at after the 2000 milligram per kg, then that drug it is categorized as the relatively safe drug. So this drug it is the relatively safe. So as drug it is moved from 5 to 2000 milligram, so drug safety it is increased. So this category 1 it is the drug which is having the highest toxicity. Category 2 the drug having the uh, average toxicity. Then category 3 the drug having the moderate toxicity. Right. And the category 4 it is relatively safe. And the drug which having more than 2000 milligram it is generally considered as the safest drug um, in, in uh, as per the OECD guideline. So this is how by step by step process of giving just single dose you can able to classify drug into different classes from category 1 to category 5. So that is the reason why this method it is called as acute toxicity class method. Let's see what are the advantage of this method. So the, the most important advantage the, the procedure that you use it is reproducible. Second thing is that it uses very few animals. For example, if you get the effect only at the first dose itself, then there is no need to use subsequent additional three animals. Okay, so it is step by step process and it ensures that the minimum numbers of animals are used in the toxicity study. Third important advantage is that it is able to rank substance in a similar manner to other active toxicity test method. So it is easily ranked between category 1 to category 5. So these are all advantage of the first method that is OECD guideline 423. Now with the help of this slide, at a glance I am discussing three guidelines. So OECD guideline 423 we already studied. Let's compare and contrast between the, this OECD guideline 420 and OECD guideline 425 based on different criteria. So let's say first criteria it is dose selection. So in OECD guideline 423 that just now we have studied, there is no specific criteria for dose selection. So there is no citing study over here. Whereas in case of OECD guideline 420, before conducting main test, what you are doing, you are doing citing study only in the single animal. Instead of giving dose to the three animal, you are giving dose to the one animal. And then you try to observe their effect. And then uh, if there is no mortality uh, or if there is mortality then to confirm the result again you are giving dose to the one more animal. And accordingly you can select the dose and go ahead with the main study. Okay. So this is in case of the OECD guideline 420 whereas that is not the case in case of OECD guideline 423 you are directly going for the main study. So dose selection as per OECD guideline 420 you have to perform citing study. 423 there is no citing study likewise OECD guideline 425 there is no citing study. Number of animal use in case of OECD guideline 423 you need to use 5 animal and in all cases preferably you are using the female. Likewise in 423 you need to use 3 animals in OECD guideline 425 you need to use the 5 animals. Let's see what is the synonyms in case of OECD guideline 420 since you select the starting dose Okay, so there is no need to follow the stepwise procedure. So once you select that starting dose, so you have your dose it is fixed. So that fixed dose you are giving in the main study. So that is the reason the OECD guideline 420 it is called as the fixed dose procedure. Whereas OECD guideline 423 it is called as acute toxic class method. Why? Because after the conduction of this study, one can classify drug into different category and different classes as per the GHS that is globally harmonized system of the classification. Whereas OECD guideline 425 it is called as up and down procedure. So based on toxic effect you can either increase the dose or you can decrease the dose. That is the reason why OECD 425 it is called as up and down procedure. Okay. Next is the dose. So in case of OECD 420 based on citing study you select the dose. So that can be 5, 50, 300 or 2000 milligram per kg or in case of exceptional case when you want to know the complete safety of the drug you can go up to the dose of 5000 milligram per kg as well okay but that is an exceptional case only wherever, wherever uh, there are such guidelines likewise in OECD guideline 423 there is no citing study so you are directly starting with the 5 milligram first then you are going ahead with 50 then 300 or may you may go up to 2000 whereas in case of OECD guideline 425 the starting dose it is 175 milligram per kg. If there is no sign and symptom of toxicity here, 
then you can multiply 175 milligram by 3.2 as a progression factor and whatever dose you will get that you can give as a second set of the five animals and if there is no further effect is there no toxic effect is there then that dose also multiply by three factor of the 3.2 so there is progression factor of the 3.2 so you can multiply it and calculate the dose and that dose can be given as a next subsequent dose to the further five set of the animals okay so we have seen about the dose we have we did a good comparison of the dose between all three type of guidelines likewise so let's see alternative methods so when you talk about 420 so it was the first alternative method to conventional oral toxicity test of 401 then OECD 423 it is the second alternative so it is relatively new then OECD 425 it is the third alternative to conventional oral toxicity test that is 401 so we have three alternative for the conventional test so generally nowadays we prefer using either OECD guideline 420 or we are using OECD guideline 423 to determine the toxic effect of the drug. Now let's see how, what is the criteria for um, designating the animal. So in case of 420 uh, you say uh, you write abbreviation A that indicate the death, B it indicate the sign of toxicity and C it indicate the survival with no toxicity. So suppose there are five animals and your observation it is something like this like a is there then there is b b okay and fifth animal it show the c so what it indicates so there are two animal who died the b indicate there are two animal who show the sign of toxicity but there is no death and the c only one that indicate one animal is survived with no toxicity okay so this is how you can write observation as per oecd guideline 420 Whereas in case of OECD guideline 423, here you consider either death of the animal and number of morbid animal. So both classified as the same observation. For example, if number of morbid or the dead animal out of three are three, then you will be writing observation as the three. If the number of morbid and death animal are two, then you, you are just writing observation as the two and one and zero depending upon the death of the animal or morbidity in those particular animal where you have given the dose okay whereas in case of OECD guideline 420 the observation is recorded as x is equal to death and o it is o abbreviation it is used for the survival of that so this is how you record observation in case of different kind of OECD guideline I hope it is clear to you now let's see what do you mean by citing study so we have seen here in case of OECD guideline 420 there is provision of the citing study for selection of the dose. So do remember that the purpose of the citing study, it is the selection of appropriate starting dose for the main study. So instead of randomly giving the dose, first you can select the starting dose by performing the citing study in single animal. So this is how you have saved number, use of number of animal. Because in main study you have seen either you are using three animal or you are using the five animal. So instead of giving that one dose to the five animal or three animal, first you can give the sing that particular dose in single animal. You look at for the observation and to confirm that particular observation, you can give those to one additional animal. And once the, you select the dose, so that dose can be given to further three animals. So this is the purpose of the citing study. Let's see what is the method. So this is this study it is completed when decision on starting dose for the main study can be made or if the death is seen at the lowest fixed dose. If that is the case, it means the citing study purpose it is served, you have selected the dose. In addition to this, based on previous in vivo or in vitro study with structurally related chemicals, the starting dose for citing study it is selected from the fixed dose level of the 5, 50, 300 and 2000 milligram per kg. So if you have already done in vivo study or you have done the in vitro study, of the structurally related chemicals. So if whatever drug you have selected is structurally related to other compounds which were already being studied, then in that case, if they show that it having some toxic effect at the 5 milligram, then you can select 5 milligram for this chemical as well. Or you may select the 50 milligram depending upon the data which is available with those particular drug. Now suppose if data it is not available, or the data of structurally related chemical it is not available, then in absence of such information, Instead of starting with the 5 milligram, you can start straight away with the 3 milligram per kg dose of, of the citing study. Okay, 
So this is the citing study. So purpose it is to select appropriate dose to perform the main study. In case of all type of study, that is the citing study, main study, or in case of limit test that we, we are going to see in next subsequent part. So in all those cases, do remember that you are observing that particular animals at least for 24 hours. Okay. So the period of at least 24 hours will be allowed between dosing of each animal and for looking of the looking for the observation. So 24, uh, it means for every 24 hours you are doing the observation and you look for any sign and symptom of toxicity or the death of the animal. So this procedure it is continue for at least 14 days. So all, all animals should be observed for at least 14 days and they should be observed for every 24 hours. So once in a day for 14 days you observe or you look for the sign and symptom of toxicity or death in the animal in which you have given the dose for studying the toxic effect of the drug. Okay. So we are, so this is about the main study and citing study. Now if you know that or uh, if you have the chemicals which is such that which, which is considered as a non-toxic. Okay. So uh, in that case you perform the limit test. So the limit test it is primarily used in a situation where experimenter has information that the test material it is likely to be non-toxic and having toxicity only above regulatory limit. So we have seen in case of main study and in case of citing study, we generally start the dose from 5 milligram, 50 milligram, 300 and then we go for the 2000 milligram. But now if you know that your drug it is non-toxic because based on the data, this information it is already available. Then instead of going for this lowest dose, what you can do, you can directly go for the dose of 2000 milligram per kg. Means the first dose that you are giving or uh, in case of citing study, it itself of 2000 milligram per kg and it serves as the limit test for, uh, for these guidelines. Okay. In those situations where there is little or no information about it, toxicity is available. So this is in case where uh, the information it is available and it show that the drug is relatively safe and it having no toxicity. Whereas in those situations where there is little or no information about it, toxicity it is there or the test material it is expected to be toxic, then in that case you can start with the main, main test and as far as possible you can start with the lowest possible dose that is the three uh, that is the five milligram per kg or you can start with the 300 milligram per kg and if you get toxic effect then you can go down uh, from 300 to 50 milligram okay you also get toxic effect at 50 then you can go down to the 5 milligram so this way also you can go or you can start with the lowest possible dose okay so this is in case of the limit test so now let's see how limit test it is performed so if you have the drug for which the structure related compound it show no toxicity so that is the reason why you are performing the limit test so you have selected the dose starting dose itself it is 2000 milligram per kg so when we have given the 2000 milligram per kg dose there could be two possibility either there is no death or the death it is only in the one animal in that case that drug can be classified as category 5 drug the drug which is relatively safer okay or you can also give 5000 milligram dose and you can see whether what is its effect at the 5000 milligram so if the if drug does not show any sign and symptom of 5000 milligram or so then that drug it is classified as category 5 or unclassified and having the toxic effect above 5000 milligram per kg so this is in case when there is no mortality whereas if there is mortality it is there in two to three animal then you should not classify the drug rather you should give next low dose to the animal so instead of 2000 now you are given 300 milligram per kg to the three animals and based on the death or no death you can classify that drugs or you may go to the next subsequent lowest possible dose so this is generally done in case of those drug for which information is available and it show that the drug does not having toxic effect. So instead of following uh, the low dose to up do, uh, the more dose or high, high dose approach, you follow high dose to low dose approach in case of limit test. Okay. I hope it is clear to everyone. So based on the main test, based on the citing study, based on the limit test, you can classify drug into the different categories. So this is in case of acute toxicity test. 
in addition to that you can also perform sub acute and chronic toxicity testing now what is sub acute and chronic toxicity testing so according to ghs guideline so ghs that is globally harmonized system it has defined uh, the sub acute and chronic toxicity test as a specific target organ systemic toxicity which arises from repeated exposure of the drug so if the specific target organ or systemic toxicity if it is arising from repeated exposure of the drug then you can show then you can say that the drug having sub acute or chronic toxicity to the drugs okay so it consists of the oral dermal and inhalation test so you can perform any of these test depending upon the nature of drug so as we have seen sub acute we perform study for the 28 days whereas in case of sub chronic or repeated dose study we perform this study for at least 19 days in 90 days in case of the rodents okay so in case of sub acute and chronic test there are different end points let's see what are those end points so in such cases the end points it is the evaluation of the clinical observation so you observe what is the effect of the drug Uh, on the animal you also take the blood sample and you observe for the biochemical parameters then whole body gross necropsy where you sacrifice the animals remove all those parts and then you are doing the histopathological study so that can also be done and in addition to this microscopic examination of all organs and tissue through histopathological study after gross necropsy can also be performed to judge the toxic effect of the drug okay so these are the different types of guidelines uh, related to the oecd let's see what are the application of these guidelines so the first application is that these oecd guidelines and toxicity study by doing these methods can provide information on hazardous properties and also you can calculate ld50 value so we will see how to calculate ld50 value also okay so this is the first application second application is that it allow chemical toxicity to be rank and classify according to globally harmonized system or it is the ghs for the classification of the chemicals so we have seen the category 1 to 5 you can define uh, the drug into different category based on their toxic effect so these are the applications of the oecd guidelines so let's see about demo for ld50 calculation so i am going to the excel sheet so now i have this data of toxicity now suppose instead of selecting oecd guideline you have randomly selected the dose and dose of the animal that you have given was 20 mg 40 mg 60 mg 80 mg and 100 mg per kg okay so if these doses are given and in those doses as per traditional method so this calculation this observation it is as per traditional method where the dose there is no guidelines were available for calc, um, for giving the initial dose whereas in oecd 420 423 you have seen that guidelines are available so you are your starting dose is 5 5 mg then 300 and then you are going for the next uh, you are going for next subsequent dose up to 2000 or 5000 mg per kg okay whereas as per conventional guide, uh, guideline if you go and if you uh, you are given the dose that is 20 40 60 80 and 100 and if you give, uh, regard the percentage dead animal for example out of 10 if there is no death is there then zero percentage is the death and then out of 10 animal if three are died then 30 percentage of animal uh, show the mortality if out of 10 if there is six animals are died it will 60% of animal they show the cis mortality okay likewise we can calculate percentage of animal uh, they died or they show the sign and symptom of the toxicity so here the end point it is the death of the animal so that that you must remember here you are not considering the sign and symptom of the toxicity okay so there are two method if you have this data of the dose and percentage of the dead animal then there are two method by which you can calculate ld50 value that is lethal dose 50% so these methods are like probit value or miller and tenter method so obviously in both case we are using probit value um to calculate the ld50 value okay and second method it is the carbers method so first we will see the tenter method okay so suppose if you have this data then as per tenter method first you need to calculate the log dose so let's calculate the log dose so log 10 of 20 we are selected so you got uh, the log dose of the 1.301 okay 
so accordingly you can calculate log those for all the doses for so for 20 you calculated 1.301 40 it is 1.602 60 it is 1.77 80 it is 1.90 likewise 100 you got it is the 2 as a log dose okay now uh, they, they, there is scale for converting this percentage mortality into the probit so there is probit table so how to read this probit table suppose if you want to convert the mortality into the probit table for calculation of LD50 then for example for 10% is the mortality that you have observed then in such case as per probit table this mortality of 10% can be converted into probit of 3.72 suppose if you observe the mortality of 15% then how you will read so this is 10 okay then you go to the 5 and you locate here so 10 plus 5 is 15 so the probit of 15% it is 3.96 okay so I am just highlighting this so that uh, it can be visible to you and you can easily understand how to uh, locate this probate okay so you can see this is the probate for the 15 percent likewise this is the probate for in case of the 19 percent okay so first you need to locate or you need to convert percentage mortality into the probate scale so this is the probate table likewise you have the log table so there is probate table also which convert your percentage mortality into probate scale okay so suppose if there is no death and if there is 100 percent death so here you need to apply the correction formula so very easy to remember how you will be applying correction formula so correction formula must be plus minus 2.5 percent okay so plus minus it should be plus minus 2.5 percent so suppose if there is zero percentage is dead then you should not write here as a zero but instead of zero here you add 2.5 okay so zero plus 2.5 is 2.5 whereas if 100 you should not write 100 as a probit but what you can do in case of if that is the 100 then you can subtract 2.5 from the 100 100 minus 2.5 so it is 97.5 so in 0 you will be adding 2.5 and in 100 you are subtracting by the 2.5 so the value you got it is 97.5 and for remaining percentage you keep as such only correction it is required in case of the 0 and in case of the 100 because the value it is considered as plus minus 2.5 percentage okay so 30 percent you consider 30 percent only 60 you consider 60 only 90 you consider 90 only now if you look at this this table then there is no value it is given for 2.5 but value it is given for 2 and value it is given for 3 so how you will calculate this for 2.5 you can take average since the value for 2.5 is not available so you can take the average of the probit scale for 2 and 3 so you will get certain value so it is coming to 3.05 so or you can simply write this value as a 3.04 okay because 3 5 is almost considered as a 3.04 then let's see what is the probit scale for 30 so the probit scale for 30 it is coming to 4.48 so I am writing that here it is coming to 4.48 what is the probit scale for uh, 60 60 probit scale it is coming to 5.25 so here it is 5.25 what is the probit scale for 90 90 it is coming to 6.28 so this was for the 90 and how much is probit scale for 97 so for 97 uh, you can look at here so this is 97 but it is 97.5 so what you can do you can take the average of these two so let's take average of these two values so is equal to average of 97 and 98 probit scale so it is coming to 6.965 okay now what you can do you can draw the graph of log dose versus probit so this is the log dose on the x-axis and y-axis you have plotted the probit okay and as per the Miller formula you can try to locate first thing that is the LD50 so log dose 50 so where is your log dose 50 so uh, or it is LD50 it is nothing but the it is the dose where 50 percent of animal are died okay so now 50 percent if you look at here the 50 percent it is coming to 
the probit scale of 5. So here you can see I have highlighted that 50% is coming to probit scale of 5. So if you interpolate this, that is from probit scale of 5, whichever log dose you will get, okay. So that log dose, it indicates the LD50 probit. So now this is coming to 1.74. So this is the, uh, it is the dose at which 50% of animal they died because it is, uh, it is uh, related to in the probit scale 5, it is related correspond to 50% of the mortality. Okay. So now once you do that, now you can take simple anti-log of this. How you will do take the anti-log? So when you take the log dose, so it is the log dose of 10 you have taken. So when you take anti-log, so what you are doing, you are taking 10 uh, raised to the power of and then you are selecting this. So it gives you anti-log of 54.95. So 54.95, it is LD50 value by, by using the, uh, the method of the Miller and Tenty, Tenters. So by the Miller and Tenters, you have calculated LD50 value. So simply what you have done to summarize, you have converted you, your percentage mortality into the probit scale. You have drawn the graph of uh, probit scales uh, versus log dose. And then you have located 50% mortality in, of the probit scale that indicates the death in 50% of the animals. And corresponding log dose you have determined that is coming to 1.74. And you have taken anti-log of that, that because you need to convert log dose into anti-log to get the dose. Because LD50 it is the dose at which there is 50% mortality. It is not a log dose where there is 50% mortality. So you have calculated the anti-log. Okay. But do remember that whatever calculation you get here, it having some standard error mean. So how you will calculate this standard error? So as per these uh, calculations, the standard error of LD50 can be calculated from the following formula where uh, standard error of LD50 is equal to log of LD84 minus log of LD16 divided by square root of 2n. So now what is n here? n it is number of animal use. So now based on that we will try to calculate standard error mean. So how you so uh, for that first you have to locate LD84. So how you will be locating LD84? So go to the 80 and this is the 4. So at 84, you see how much is your probit value it is coming. So here the probit value it is coming to 5.99. Okay. So what you can do 5.99 you consider as a 6. And from 6 you can interpolate. So when you interpolate from this 6 probit value, whatever log dose you will get, it indicate LD84. So LD84 it is coming to 1.85. Now you need to calculate LD16. How will you calculate LD16? So at 16 scale, you need to calculate this. So it is coming to at 16, you, it is coming to 4.01. You can see here, okay? So probit located at is 4.01, which is correspond to the 16. So 4.01 you consider as a 4, and from 4 you can just interpolate. So you got uh, the scale of log dose of 1.5. So LD16 you got 1.5. So first you need to take the difference of LD84 and LD16. So simply what you can do, you can take uh, is equal to this. You can subtract with this one. So you will get difference that is the 0.35. Then the square root of 2A. So what is the N? N is the number of animal. So suppose there are 10 animals are there. Then 2 multiplied by 10 it is 20. And square root of 20 you need to calculate. So uh, it is it will come to 4.47. Let's verify. We'll be using this calculator, square root calculator. So I am just uh, adding this. I've added 20 and now I'm saying calculation. Now you can see the square root of 20 it is coming to 4.47. So this value you can 4.47 you can note write down here. Okay. So now let's calculate this. So this equal to this value divided by your square root of 2n, okay, so it will coming to 0 0.0783. So your LD50 according to uh, this Miller and Trenter method is equal to 54.95, okay, and uh, the standard error mean it is coming to 0. 
zero seven eight. So you can take anti log of this also. So how you will take anti log of this? So ten raised to the power of ten raised to the power of this value. So you get one point one nine. So it will be standard error mean will be one point one nine. So you can say LD fifty value of uh, your drug. According to this probit method, or by using Miller and Trent, it is coming to 50. so 54.95 plus and minus 1.19. So this um, range it will be there, and that will be the standard error. Okay. So this is how you can determine the LD50 by using Miller and Trent method. Second method it is the Carbers method. So in here it is very simple method. You can first need to calculate the dose difference. So how you will calculate dose difference? So for example. In case of these two doses, so the dose difference could be first you have to select the highest dose, which is subtracted by the lowest dose. Okay, so you got the dose difference, and here you have seen the dose difference everywhere it is same. So there is difference of 20. So difference between 20 and 40 is 20, 40 and 60 it is 20. Okay, then you can calculate the mean mortalities. So to calculate mean mortality, you can select average, and you can select the first two. So you got the mean mortality. Likewise, you can calculate mean mortality for other also. Okay, then you can do product of this dose difference and mean mortality. So it will come to this 20 multiplied by 1.5. So you will get product of this. You likewise you can calculate this product for all those values. Okay, then you calculate p total. So p total means it is product total. Okay, so the product total it is coming to 460. So according to the Carbers method, LD50 is equal to lethal dose to all minus in bracket p total divided by n. So let's try to calculate this. So is equal to lethal dose to all means wherever there there is death of all animal. So where there is death of all animal is there. So you can see here. So in case of 100 milligram per kg of the dose, out of 10 there is death of 10 animal, isn't it? So this is the dose. It is the lethal dose where there is there is death of all animal minus p total. So this is the value for the p total divided by total number of the animals. So total number of animals are ten. So this value you can add. So now you can see here also you got the LD50 value of fifty four. Okay. So in with the both the method we have verified that by using this data. We got the LD50 value of the 54. I hope these calculations are clear to you, so you can calculate LD50 value by two methods: Miller and Tinter method and Carbers method. Okay. So I have done with demo of LD50 calculation. I have referred uh, this research paper, uh, this paper, uh, these articles written by Muhammad Ayar uh, for especially the Miller and Tinter methods, and I have referred these uh, websites of the NIH. And OECD for the guideline number 423, 423, 425. I have given this link in description box also. So if you want to refer in the detail, you can go through that. Okay. So thanks for watching my session. For more such learning, subscribe to my channel. And if you like my session, then do remember to give me a thumbs up.